Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of biochemistry which we are doing from Satya Narayana textbook of biochemistry lipids ki digestion ka topic aaj start kar rahe so let's start our discussion we have already done carbohydrate absorption and digestion we have also dealt with protein digestion and absorption and today we will discuss lipids we know that there is considerable variation in the daily consumption of lipids which mostly depend on the economic status and the dietary habits so there are some people who are uh, eating different types of food and that that happens across the world as well as within the same house i mean if you imagine yourself aap apne aap ko dekhe to ek din aapki diet kisi tarah hoti hai ek din kisi tarah agar aap kisi din pure vegetables le rahe hain to usme zahir fat ka component bilkul negligible ho gaya या डिफरेंट तरह का फैट है डिपेंडिंग अपॉन आप कौन सी वेजिटेबल ले रहे हैं कौन से सीरियल्स ले रहे हैं कंपेयर टू अ डे जिसमें आप हैवी मील ले रहे हैं से फॉर एग्जांपल बीफ ले रहे हैं स्टेक्स खा रहे हैं उसमें ज़्यादा फैट कंटेंट ज़्यादा है सो इट डिपेंड्स फ्रॉम पर्सन टू पर्सन विद इन द सेम पर्सन इट डिपेंड्स फ्राम यू नो डिफरेंट डेज एंड डिफरेंट मील्स के वॉट यू आर ईटिंग दैट विल ऑल डिसाइड कि आपका लिपिड कॉन्टेंट डाइट का कितना है द इनटेक ऑफ द लिपिड इज मच लेस and it is usually less than 60 grams per day in poorer sections of the society particularly in the less developed countries in the developed world however you know there is a little larger consumption of fats because butter use ho raha hai ghee use ho raha hai um, you know high quality meat use ho raha hai jisme fat contents kafi zyada so it can go up to 150 even more than that of this uh, consumption of the lipid more than 90% of the fat is triacylglycerol so that's the biggest chunk of the fat that we eat the rest of the dietary lipid is made up of phospholipid cholesterol and cholesterol esters and free fatty acid but if you have to remember one major type of uh, fat that we eat that is the triacylglycerol lipids are insoluble or sparingly soluble yani they are hardly soluble in aqueous solution because they are lipids the digestive enzymes however are present in the aqueous medium now there is a challenge and the challenge is the fact ke aapne jo food particle khaye hain usme fats hain theek hai ab ye fat water soluble hai nahi lekin jo enzyme jisne inspect karna hai wo fat soluble nahi hai wo water soluble hai so enzymes are present in aqueous medium and fats are Uh, not soluble in aqueous medium so how do these two interact or iske liye body mein pura ek system hai fortunately we have a specialized machinery which increases the surface area for the lipids for digestion and this solubilizes uh, the digested product for absorption so we have the mechanism to handle fats so that they become uh, easily digestible and absorbable okay now oral cavity mein there is no digestion of the fat and there is minor digestion of fats in the stomach the digestion of lipid is initiated in the stomach uh, by lipases which are acid stable because you know ke stomach mein acidic environment hai this enzyme is believed to originate from the glands at the back of the tongue actually a stomach contains a separate gastric lipase as well which works uh, in the stomach ph the digestion of lipid in the stomach of an adult is almost negligible it's very minimal digestion in the stomach in case of infants milk fat uh, which is present in the milk can be hydrolyzed by the gastric lipases to some extent uh, and that is because the stomach ph of infant is close to neutrality it's not acidic so pure uh, paragraph ka basic purpose is heading mein summarized hai ki you can actually uh, digest a very little quantity of fats in your stomach so your stomach can not handle big quantities of uh, lipid digestion because main lipid digestion actually happens in the small intestine so once the food content comes in the small intestine there is a phenomena which is known as emulsification and emulsification is uh, mandatory for digestion it is a phenomena of dispersion of lipid into smaller droplets due to reduction of the surface tension this is accompanied by increase of the surface area of lipid droplets emulsification is essential for digestion it is not complementary it is not facilitative it is not something which if present is okay if it doesn't present no uh, uh, you know it is still okay it's not something like it is mandatory mandatory means it has to be there so without emuls emulsification you won't be able to digest fats okay so that's a mandatory phenomena it's essential for digestion 
अगर इफेक्टिव डाइजेशन चाहिए लिपिड्स की सिंस द एंजाइम कैन एक्ट ओनली ऑन द सरफेस ऑफ द लिपिड ड्रॉपलेट्स दे कैन नॉट एक्ट ऑन बिग लिपिड मॉलिक्यूल्स सो डिवाइडिंग दीज बिग मॉलिक्यूल्स इनटू स्मॉल ड्रॉपलेट्स इज व्हाट फैसिलिटेट्स द प्रोसेस ऑफ डाइजेशन ऑफ लिपिड्स एंड इमल्सिफिकेशन हैपेंस बाय थ्री मैकेनिज्म्स नंबर 1 देयर इज अ डिटर्जेंट एक्शन फ्रॉम द बाइल सॉल्ट्स व्हिच कम फ्रॉम द लिवर surfactant action by the degraded lipids and mechanical mixing due to peristalsis ye teen cheeze hain jo emulsification karti hain teesra wala samajhna sabse aasan hai aap ek tube ke andar for example koi lipid dal dein aur thoda sa usme water ho aur oil dal dein for example aur ab is test tube ko ya is tube ko aap tezi se shake kare jab aap isko shake karenge to jo oil hai wo chote 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 bahut sare droplets mein divide ho jayega this is the third phenomena mechanical mixing aapke intestine mein yahi hota hai the fats are emulsified fired into smaller 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 uh, drops and then there is a very important role of bile salts so what bile salts do they basically acha isko bile salts bhi kehte hain aur bile acids bhi kehte hain so both the words are used very much interchangeably they are biological detergents which are synthesized from cholesterol in your liver they are secreted with the bile into the duodenum bile salts possess a steroid nucleus and there is a side chain which is attached to glycine or taurine and for the synthesis aur ye hum alag chapter mein already kar chuke hain ki how is bile produced how is it metabolized bolized now bile salts are most effective biological emulsifying agents because they break big lipid molecules into smaller lipid molecules they interact with lipid and they uh, you know prevent them from coalescing so a bigger lipid droplet is divided into smaller droplets and they do not combine back okay and then surfactant action of degraded lipid once the lipids have been degraded the initial digestive products of the lipids which are the free fatty acids and the monoacyl glycerols they also further promote the process of emulsification so they kind of uh, feed forward uh, positive feed forward apna loop carry karte hain ke jo already lipid emulsify ho gaya hai wo further apne counter parts ko aur emulsify karwata hai besides the action of bile acids and bile salts uh, i told you already the mixing of uh, the food within the intestine because of peristalsis so there's a jerky movements within the intestine and they break the lipid molecules okay and now once the big lipid molecules are broken down into smaller droplets uh, the enzymes come in action there are there are very important enzymes in the small intestine which are coming basically from the pancreas so the pancreatic enzymes are primarily responsible for degradation of triacylglycerols cholesterol esters and phospholipids how triacylglycerols are actually uh, degraded or digested we have from the pancreas pancreatic lipase which is a major enzyme for fat digestion this enzyme preferentially cleaves fatty acids at position 1 and 3 and the products that we get are the monoacylglycerols and free fatty acids the activity of the pancreatic lipase is inhibited by bile acids which are present along with the enzyme in the small intestine so that's an important correlate ke uh, bile acid ka kya action hai pancreatic lipase is par this problem is overcome by small protein which is known as colipase and uh, the job of the colipase is to stop the bile salts from inhibiting pancreatic lipase is because just imagine this okay this is your small intestine and this is the pancreatic duct so the pancreatic lipase is coming here to digest the lipids but then the bile acids are inhibiting the pancreatic lipase so we need this protein uh, colipase kyunki hame uh, डाइजेशन तो करनी है ना लिपिड्स की सो लाइपेज हैव टू वर्क और ये जो बाइल एसिड्स लाइपेज को रोक रहे हैं वी डोंट वांट दिस सो इन ऑर्डर टू गेट रिड ऑफ दिस वी हैव टू सम हाउ इनहिबिट द एक्शन ऑफ बाइल एसिड्स तो वहां पे फिर ये प्रोटीन काम आता है विच इज नोन एज द कॉलीपेज प्रोटीन ओके सो कॉलीपेज बेसिकली हेल्प द प्रोसेस ऑफ डाइजेशन बिकॉज इज कीप्स दैंक्रेटिक लाइपेज एक्टिवेटेड lipid esterase is a less specific enzyme for uh, pancreatic from the pancreatic juice it also helps the process of digestion of uh, certain forms of lipids okay so easy eh triacylglycerols are ultimately broken down into monoacylglycerols and free fatty acid jaise प्रोटीन से अमीनो एसिड्स बनते हैं कार्बोहाइड्रेट से मोनोसेक्राइड्स बनते हैं बिल्कुल ऐसे ही लिपिड से अल्टीमेटली यू गेट मोनोसाइल ग्लिसरोल्स एंड फ्री फैरी एसिड्स राइट 
Then we also have cholesterol esters in our diet and they are acted upon by esterases enzymes and they also produce free fatty acids and cholesterol. Then we have phospholipids. So we have uh, phospholipases to digest phospholipids. These are the enzymes which are responsible for phospholipid digestion. And pancreatic juice contains a lot of phospholipases, particularly phospholipase A2. And as a result of this, we also get free fatty acid and uh, lysophospholipid. So in all form of fat digestion at the end we are getting free fatty acid and the associated molecule so if you are digesting triacylglycerol you get free fatty acid and monoacylglycerols if you are digesting cholesterol esters you get free fatty acids and alongside you get um, uh, the cholesterol as a free molecule so this is how the fats are broken down so no digestion of fats in oral cavity limited digestion in stomach esophagus mutovesicus digestion it's a passage tube and uh, full blown digestion in the small intestine because of the pancreatic enzymes and you know that uh, most of the macromolecules that we eat including carbohydrates proteins and lipids they are largely digested in the small intestine okay now once we have got free fatty acids and a smaller unit such as monoacylglycerol or cholesterol the next step is to understand how the fats are absorbed. Now, there is a lipolytic theory which is put forward by Verza. According to this, fats are completely hydrolyzed to glycerol and free fatty acid. The latter are absorbed as soaps in association with the bile salt. So they are absorbed with the action of the bile salt. Then there is a partition theory. This theory states that digestion of the triacylglycerol is partial and it is not complete. And the partially digested triacylglycerols uh, form the emulsified droplets and those are uh, absorbed as partially digested uh, lipids. Okay. Then there is a Bergstrom theory. This says that, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it actually have replaced the earlier theories and it says that the primary products obtained from the lipid digestion are two monoacylglycerol free fatty acid and cholesterol and these are then absorbed now what is the role of bile salts in lipid absorption so I have told you bile acids and bile salts number one to they help in the process of emulsification and the process of emulsification is necessary for digestion but they also help the bile salts they also help in lipid absorption so they have a dual function. They help in the process of digestion of lipids as well as absorption of lipid. Okay. So besides their participation in digestion, bile salts are essential for absorption as well. Bile salts form mixed missiles with lipids. These missiles are smaller in size than lipid emulsified droplets and they have a disc-like shape and the hydrophilic group of the lipids are oriented to the outside and the hydrophobic portions are inside the whole problem is that the fatty acids and the monosylglycerols they are not water soluble so they form droplets uh, with bile salts in the outer side per hydrophilic portion and once there is a hydrophilic portion it can be absorbed easily by uh, and through the cell this diagram again tells you that in mouth there is no digestion of fats the fats that you eat is primarily composed of triacylglycerol it also contains phospholipids and cholesterol esters so nothing is digested in mouth nothing happens in uh, esophagus obviously and in stomach maybe there is minimal digestion so almost unchanged but in the small intestine majority of the digestion happens by pancreatic enzymes and phospholipases and pancreatic lipases and whatnot okay this is a diagram to show you a missile a missile basically is uh, uh, you know a round droplet which contain a lot of different components so it contains uh, digested uh, uh, fat for example free fatty acid so you see there is a free fatty acid there is a cholesterol molecule there is a phospholipid molecule and then there are also bile salts so there is a bile salt missile so this is actually a complete carriage package for fat so this gets into the intestinal mucosal cell from where you get uh, cholesterol separate and fatty acid separate and uh, phospholipid separate and then you have got monosylglycerol separate and they are absorbed then into the blood okay the mixed missiles serve as the major vehicle so man aapko bataya it carriage package hai taxi ki tarah hai transport car ki tarah hai jo in sab ko leke chala jata hai cell ke andar so all this is written there the missile formation is also essential for absorption of fat soluble vitamins so this missile formation is not taking the fat products but it also take fat soluble vitamins which are vitamin a vitamin d and vitamin k okay 
Now, synthesis of lipids in the intestinal mucosal cell, the free fatty acid of short and medium chain, less than 10 carbon after their absorption into the intestinal cell, they do not undergo any modification. They enter the portal circulation and they are transported to the liver. Obviously, from the intestinal cell, they go into the portal vein and ultimately to the liver. However, the long chain fatty acids are activated by an enzyme called thiokinase in the intestinal cells. And the acyl CoA derivatives so formed combine the two monoacylglycerols to produce triacylglycerol. So, in intestinal cells do reassemble long uh, chain fatty acids okay that's the bottom line story that you have to remember so some of the fatty acids are absorbed without any modification and some of them are modified to form triacylglycerols now the intestinal mucosal cells they also secrete lipid the lipid that are resynthesized in the intestinal cell from the long chain fatty acids they are put together as lipid droplets and surrounded by a thin layer of apolipoproteins and this package of lipids enveloped in the layer stabilizes the droplet and increases the solubility and these are ultimately the known as chylomicrons so chylomicrons are basically the products so if you look at this diagram this is the cell of intestinal mucosa and you're getting long chain fatty acids so the long chain fatty acids after all the processing via thiokinase are packaged into a lipid droplet which is known as chylomicron it contains fatty acid it contains triacylglycerol cholesterol esters as well as other phospholipids and apolipoproteins so the whole package containing all these things is known as chylomicron and the chylomicron is absorbed again into the portal circulation and goes to the liver. So the topic of chylomicron is of super value because we uh, discuss different type of lipids. What is VLDL? What is LDL? They vary in the concentrations of uh, different uh, components of the lipid droplet. So the chylomicron which are thus produced, yani, jo lipid ke droplets bane hai, which contains so many things, they migrate to the plasma membrane of the intestinal mucosal cell. They are released by exocytosis into the lymphatic vessels, which here are called lacteals. And uh, because they are, you know, high lipid content, they appear milky white in appearance and the blood goes ultimately to the liver and the peripheral tissues. Okay. Now, a few disorders which are associated with lipid digestion and absorption. Istitoria is a term that you must know. It's a condition which is characterized by lipid coming in the feces. So, istitoria is loss of lipids in the feces. It's a, if there is any defect in the secretion of bile or just imagine, I mean, this is your stomach and then after stomach there is a small intestine. So, most of the fat digestion is happening in the small intestine. Or is fat digestion ke liye kya chahiye? Aapko liver se chahiye bile taaki emulsification ho sake. Aapko pancreas se chahiye pancreatic enzymes taaki digestion ho sake. Ab agar in dono aur aapko absorption ke liye zahre yaan pe cells chahiye. So, agar in tino processes mein, agar bile mein koi garbad hai, pancreatic enzyme mein koi garbad hai ya cells mein koi garbad hai, to fat digestion digest nahi hogi ya absorb nahi hogi or ultimately wo feces mein nikal jayegi this is called istitoria so any defect in the secretion of bile or pancreatic juice ya any problem in the absorption ya yani intestinal cells mein agar koi masla hai so if you understand the normal flow of uh, concepts then you easily understand ke pathology kya hogi okay now what are cholesterol stones uh, this happens in gall stone uh, shape uh, aapke gallbladder mein stones banna shuru ho jate made up of cholesterol it is found more frequently in females as compared to the males and then ultimately you remove the gallbladder which is what we call cholecystectomy obesity and fat absorption obesity is a major problem in many parts of the world as the availability of the food is generally abundant and people are using a lot of processed food so that therefore their bmis are very very high these days intake of lipid uh, largely contributes to obesity in recent years pharmacological intervention to prevent uh, fat digestion and absorption and thus obesity are used. For example, pancreatic lipase hai. Hamko pata hai ki it degrades dietary triacylglycerol to fatty acid and glycerol which are absorbed. Now there is a drug called Orlistat. It's a non-hydrolyzable analog of triacylglycerol and it's a powerful inhibitor of pancreatic lipase. So ab fat khare, saath mein Orlistat khare, to fat digesti nahi hoi, absorbi nahi hoi, to fat nahi honge ab. There is another drug called Olestra. It's a synthetic lipid produced by esterification of natural fatty acids with sucrose. It tastes like natural lipid. However, it cannot be hydrolyzed and therefore gets excreted. But I mean, uh, why would you use something which only tastes like lipid? There is no alternate to the natural uh, food, obviously. You know? So, uh, further risky details we have in pharmacology. So, we are now done with the basic concepts associated with digestion of carbohydrate, proteins and fats. Next, we will start nucleic acids. Take care of yourself.